For establishing a reference for comparing how bright Starfire is, let's look at three commercially available lightsabers. First, we have a Hasbro lightsaber, which runs an average of $25 and puts out about three quarters of a watt. Sadly, this old soldier appears to have lost two of its LEDs. Next, we have my trusty old Master Replicas Yoda lightsaber, which puts out about one and a quarter watts. The last reference is my Makoto Sai V3 blade. This is a single string blade, which uses 4.2 watts. And finally, this is Starfire. In the current battery configuration, its power consumption is 74 watts. My assistant's painful grimace is proof of its brightness. Let's take it inside for a closer look so you can see how it's different from other lightsabers. Using a light meter will enable us to make a more quantitative comparison of just how bright Starfire is. Right now it's recording around 740 lux for my Makoto Sai V3 single string blade. This correlates very well with Mr. Ace Rimmer's setup which records 1410 for his Makoto Sai two string blade. The reason two strings don't put out exactly double what a one string does is that the two strings, because they lay next to each other, interfere with each other so they're not as optically efficient. Next, leaving everything the same, let's put on Starfire and see what its output looks like. It starts at 52,000 lux and then decays slowly because of the high drain on the batteries. For comparison, a Makoto Sai V4 four-string lightsaber would be expected to register about 2,750 lux on this testing jig. While this suggests that Starfire is about 18 times brighter than a V4 blade, it's not quite that good. And the reason is, is that the light meter I'm using has a nonlinear response to colors. It's not as sensitive to the green of my Makoto Sai as it is to the white of Starfire. I found a color correction factor online which indicates that the brightness as registered by this meter when it's looking at white light needs to be reduced by 20% to give you an equivalent brightness for the green light of a Makoto Sai. Which means, if this was a green lightsaber, that instead of an initial brightness of 50,000 lux, it would only register as about 40,000. Paradoxically, because the human eye responds better to white light than it does to green, if you were viewing this lightsaber in person, it would have actually appear much brighter than a green lightsaber of the same power. To understand how Starfire is different from most string or component blade lightsabers, we need to look inside a traditional lightsaber and uh, see how it's put together and where the losses of efficiencies occur. Here's the inside of my Makoto Sai. It's constructed of 78 5 millimeter LEDs connected together in line. The light shines that way from each LED. And that's where our first efficiency loss takes place because the light coming out of this LED almost completely strikes and, and is absorbed by the back of the next LED in line. Now, the casing is transparent, but even though it looks clear, it isn't perfectly clear. So you have some absorption in the plastic, but the big killer is the metal parts inside the LED, which absorb a lot of the light and uh, you lose some of the power, the light power out of this LED. Another problem are the wires used to conduct the electricity to each LED. These block and uh, even though they look white, uh, they're not perfectly reflective, so that's another loss to the light being generated by all the LEDs. Next, to make the string more durable, uh, they're wrapped in a clear plastic. Now I say clear, it's not perfectly clear, and this absorbs some of the light as well. But the real killer to brightness is the foam diffuser. 
This absorbs all by itself about 30% of all of the light generated by the LEDs. So that if you have a 4.2 watt Makoto Sai uh, lightsaber, you're really only seeing around two watts of light come out. The LEDs are about 85% efficient, and then you lose another 35% to all of the absorption and uh, blocking losses from the structures inside. Next, let's take a look at Starfire. Instead of the five millimeter LEDs, lined up shining light into each other, as in most component blades. Starfire consists of four strings of 31 LEDs in each string for a total of uh, 124 LEDs. What's different is that these LEDs are what are called filament LEDs. Each one of these has 28 individual LEDs in it which if we apply a low voltage, we can see on this. Let me set that up for you. And here we are. I've zoomed in so the details are easier to see. The base of the string is a quarter inch diameter wood dowel on which I've glued four pairs of parallel conductors to act as the power source for each line of LEDs. These conductors aren't visible here because they've been overpainted with white paint to act as a reflector to even out the color. Filament LEDs radiate their light radially straight outward so that the neighboring LEDs can't intercept any of the light. This makes them much more efficient than a regular string blade construction. If you look at the upper and lower LEDs in this image, which are shown on the sides, you can see that almost all the light is coming straight out. Very little light is generated, which goes back towards the base of the LED string. Another advantage of filament LEDs is that the light is radiated over a very wide angle, 170 to 180 degrees, whereas 5 millimeter LEDs radiate their light in a cone that's 35 to 45 degrees in angle. This gives filament LEDs a much more uniform illumination. The last eighth inch of each filament LED does not generate any light. So by angling them and overlapping them, we avoid any dark spots in uh, each string. Although each LED is very small, they operate at the same voltage range as a five millimeter LED, that is 2.8 to 3.2 volts. However, because there's 28 of them wired in series, that means each filament LED requires between 70 to 90 volts to operate. Now this is good and bad. A 90 volt uh, lightsaber system is going to be tricky to wire up. But what's nice about that is because your voltage is so high for the same power, your current is very low. So you have much reduced ohmic losses in the wires going to and from the LEDs. Because they radiate their light straight outward, you can run all of the wires you want in these open channels between them, or better still, down the hollow center of a tube used to support them instead of this dowel, so that the wires are completely out of the way and there's no interference of them blocking any of the light emitted by the LEDs. The LEDs are wired so that all four strings are effectively in parallel making one giant long string of 124 LEDs. What this means, if you multiply the 124 filament LEDs by 28 LEDs in each, each filament LED, you end up with 3,472 individual LEDs making up Starfire. They may be small, but they make, for it, make up for it in number. I'm currently driving the lightsaber with 16 nine volt batteries hooked in series, which provide 78 volts at 0.93 amps for a power level of about 74 watts. That battery pack has a little over 10 minutes of use on it. And although I can measure the reduction in the brightness, looking at it, I can't see any difference. So I don't really know how long the battery pack's gonna last. 
The amazing thing about Starfire is that even at 74 watts, it's being underdriven. That's only 60% of its capacity. Each of the filament LEDs is rated at one watt, which means I should be able to drive this to 124 watts without damaging any of the LEDs. And I plan to do so as soon as I can figure out a battery configuration that is small enough and light enough to fit in the handle and isn't too cumbersome for actually using the lightsaber. One issue I need to address yet is that the filament LEDs are rather fragile. If you bend them, if they flex, they can break and they, uh, they're easy to replace in this configuration, but you don't want to be out in the field and have some of your LEDs go out on you. I would not use this lightsaber for uh, dueling, for example. But there are various things that can be done to strengthen these by putting a, an epoxy bridge underneath them to support them or to use some of the um, flexible filament LEDs, which I would like to do, but I haven't found a, a good source for them. These LEDs I had to buy from eBay, and then they came from China, and there was a three-week shipping time for them. These filament LEDs run about a dollar to a dollar ten a piece if you shop around for them. These are 6,500K LEDs, very blue-white. You can get them in a 27K, 2700K color, which is a warm light, which isn't too practical for lightsabers. They do make all the regular colors for LEDs, red, uh, magenta, blue, green, just about it, uh, purple, anything you can want. But you can only buy those in light bulbs. I have not been able to find a source for component LEDs like this. Now I have a confession. The reality is, is I called Starfire the world's brightest lightsaber as a gimmick, simply to draw attention to the potential use of filament LEDs in lightsabers. The reality is that a 74 watt lightsaber is absolutely useless. It's so bright it blinds you. You can't use it for anything. I hope you found this video interesting. If you'd like to review other web pages about lightsabers, I'll hope you visit my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. As always, thank you for watching.